All right, thank you so much, Marilee, for the introduction and going over logistics. And thank you to everybody who's attending today for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us to have a chat about what we're doing at the Research Library Partnership, as well as kind of give a little insight on our philosophy and our strategy and how we decide and, and what we do and how we work. So, you know, and how we are amplifying our community efforts to drive um, improvement and innovation. So that actual subtext around drive, you know, amplifying our community's work to drive innovation and improvement is almost a direct quote from the book, The Power of Pool. And Lorcan Dempsey brought this um, book back to our attention just recently in a staff meeting. And what really struck me is, and what really struck me is in the, in the concept in this book, they state that through pool we are able to find and access people and the resources when we need them while attracting to us the people and resources that are relevant and valuable. And that people in our social networks are really the access points to that nation we need, to that expertise we need. And when I think about that concept and mashed up with what Lorcan talks about, about how libraries need to work at net scale, I was really struck with like, well, that's exactly what the Research Library Partnership is. That's our, you know, pretty much our essence of being in our operating practice. You know, we are that network that allows us to scale learning and innovation. And we do this by providing that unique transnational network of peers to address common issues, develop a common language around these challenges, and be a place to engage with expertise, either through our network or at OCLC Research. We facilitate that group learning for that shared understanding so we can, like they say in the power pool, have faster innovation and community improvement. So how do we do this? We do this by really coming together in a virtual environment for the most part. We offer opportunities for online learning, both formal and informal, in order to inform and connect our community for, like I said, that shared understanding. We do webinars that focus on partner work, like an upcoming webinar is happening, I think in the next couple of weeks, focusing um, the, our, our colleagues from the London School of Economics is gonna be talking about how they're developing new roles and approaches for managing unique collections. It connects us to OCLC research initiatives, so we're gonna be having some webinars that really do some deep dives into research data management, and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later. We also op offer opportunities to connect to our interest groups and our working groups. These are these informal conversations where we pick topics and really explore them with the idea to increase understanding but also identify areas of research, develop working papers, and really move our community forward around particular um, challenges. So in addition to kind of the standard webinar seminar series, we've been doing some new things with us, taking another page from the power pool of, you know, how can we do some small changes? So in addition to those traditional webinar seminar formats, we've been opening up some informal spaces for people to share and get engaged deeper with the research outputs that we have. And one of the examples I have is that you know, Dr. Lynn Conaway does a lot of research around assessment in libraries. And working with our research colleagues, colleagues she is um, presenting a three-part online course on library assessment. And for our research library partners, we have spun up an interest group that runs alongside of this online learning that happens in between the formalized online courses that are offered. So it opens up a space for those participating in the course to dig into the material a little bit more, um, go through some other um, exercises that are offered, challenge each other on how they're understanding so they can have a really, um, a stronger knowledge and then how to apply that knowledge to their everyday work environment. And we're hap we're, we've been offering these uh, informal learning spaces, these peer-to-peer -peer learning spaces, um, you know, multiple times um, and at multiple time zones to really take advantage and include people across the globe and, and, and pull our partners that are working in the Asia Pacific region and Europe so um, everybody can participate. 
And we found that this opportunity has been really valuable for our partners. So we're we'll looking to opening up these more informal peer-to-peer -peer learning opportunities associated with other initiatives going forward. So where are we kind of spending our time as far as investigating? Um, I've listed four particular areas here. The work we're doing falls into these very large conceptual buckets. Um, research support and information, that's really the changing nature of our collections and research libraries and supporting our researchers. How do we help them discover, manage, and um, understand the knowledge that we're collecting? Special collections and archives, resource sharing and collective collections, and then of course, metadata. These are very broad areas. And what I found very interesting in looking at our research objectives going forward and where we're spending some time around learning efforts, we're really exploring those places where these particular areas actually mash up together. And I'll explore that a little bit more as we kind of go along here. So one of the things that I think is really important for us at the Research Library Partnership is how we help our partners transition the research that we do at OCLC into operational practice. How do we provide those opportunities for people to dig into the reports that we do, to push on some of the things that we've um, examined and give us some feedback? We've recently sent out print copies of the four-part series around research data management. This, um, and our program officer, Rebecca Bryant, is on the line with us today, so we, she's here to answer some questions in our question and answer period. But we want to develop, we are developing a three-part webinar series for our members to dig into this, but we're also having an interest group, that informal learning space that I talked about a little bit e earlier, to help us extend the conversation. Where do we need to go next? What are those? specific um, pieces of evidence or arguments, what data that you need in order to position your library effectively in this space, how can we connect you to expertise so you can advocate for your library here? Kind of in that mashup space between um, special collections and archives and research data management. Um, kind of thinking about that network, we've realized that there's some conversations that are happening in special collections and archives that could inform um, work in the research data management space. And um, we'll be looking for ways to explore that area as well. In addition, this is just a natural projection of the research work that OCLC has been doing in the special collections and archives space. Just earlier this year, we published the research and learning agenda for archives, special and distinctive collections and research libraries. And this was an effort led by our newest program officer, Chayla Weber. She's now digging into that publication and trying to find those action items there. So, just recently, she put out a call for a working group that's going to dig into key issues for further learning and research around collection stewardship, appraisal, and advocacy. Participants will form a working group that will move this work forward in these three areas, and they will focus on collection stewardship, collection building, and the operational impacts of acquisitions and archives and special collections. Our intention is to create a white paper that really lays out the ethical imperatives around collection stewardship, as well as practical strategies for enacting responsible collecting, and a toolkit to help institutions implement these strategies and advocate for the resources to do so. We're really excited about Chayla coming on board, um, and as you'll see, we're really looking for those really interesting spaces where special collections and how we're recentering re special collections in our operational workflows has an impact on areas, as I mentioned, research data management um, and things like resource sharing. So our program officer, Dennis Massey, has been a advocate for our partners in the areas of resource sharing and how that's changing um, due to a number of environmental factors. 
also SHARES, which is our trust network for sharing special collections. It's a policy network made up of RLP members, has recently gone through a policy rethink due to these environmental changes. And these environmental ch changes involved how we're shifting collections to collective collections or shared print collections to um, when we move special collections off site, how that impacts ILL policies. And I'm happy to say that the conversations that the SHARES network has had regarding sharing policies has also had a concatenating effect to other research sharing networks across our um, research library environment. He's also working with Chela to really dig into this, um, you know, what is the impact around sharing special collections, especially special collections that have moved off site. But also working with other folks, and then he meets at, um, brings people together at ALA, both at annual and midwinter, to have lunch, do a lunch and learn called the value of resource sharing. And one of the conversations that's come up that people need um, some tools and some resources to develop some ILL patron user studies. So he's going to be working with Dr. Lynn Conway to pull some resources together and also explore the feasibility of actually running some sort of survey to investigate patron user behaviors in regard to ILL. That's happening, you know, the investigation of the feasibility of the study and pulling these resources together is going to be an activity that's happening throughout this year. And if you're interested, please contact Dennis. I think this is a really interesting space around resource sharing and how it's having to change due to a lot of environmental factors. Another area of investigation that I'm really excited about is how libraries are leveraging their investment of open access. And our program officer who's based in the Netherlands, Titia van der Wolf, is taking up the flag in this area. And what we're doing as part of the Research Library Partnership is working with the OCLC's Global Council to develop a survey that will be going out worldwide asking OCLC members about their investment in the creation, curation, discovery, access and preservation of open content. We recognize that the support of open content and all those aspects tends to happen over various operational um, cylinders of excellence in the library. And we're looking to get some sort of idea or frame or grasp some conceptual knowledge around the overall investment libraries are having in order to advocate robustly for um, support of those open access materials and, and drive some innovation and some uh, robust infrastructure for um, improving the user experience and um, leveraging those open content assets for the betterment of the uh, public good. What's, we also have an internal working group looking at this, so it's what we're learning from the environmental stand externally will be synthesized and, of course, shared with our RLP partners, but we're also funneling this information back in to help inform what OCLC should be doing as a large, broad, global organization along its numerous service and product lines. So an interest group around this will be forthcoming, more than likely early of 2019 as we start getting results back from this particular survey. So, of course, metadata is a huge interest to us at OCLC, OCLC Research, and of course, the Research Library Partnership. The metadata focus group um, run by Program Officer uh, Karen smith Yoshimura is one of our longest standing interest groups. Um, they dig into a number of issues that Karen reports out on the Hanging Together blog. And I really recommend those who are involved with any metadata work, whether it's special collections, general collections, linked data work, be a part of this focus group. It is very dynamic. She has led up, I think it's the second round of the linked data implementer survey, and the upcoming webinar is going to be digging into the results of that particular survey, which are really encouraging. Talking to Chela in one of the areas that came out in that report around um, special distinct collections and archives is a further exploration around support of cataloging for audiovisual, and that is actually a topic that Karen and the Metadata Managers Focus Group will be digging into later this year. And kind of that and beyond, um, 
they've been exploring definitely some alternative ways around authorities and thinking about Wikidata. So we've been um, investigating how to support building people's skills and knowledge about um, collections data, Wikidata, and of course, um, Merrily in a kind of tangential way has started up um, a Wikimedia interest group here. So if you're interested in really getting a better understanding of what OCLV is doing with Wikipedia, the larger Wikimedia organization, and specifically around metadata and Wikidata, this is the place to be. So this is something new that it's kind of new. It's a bit of a throwback, but it's a, a reinterpretation or reinvention of some things that OCLC research has done in the past. Earlier this year and over the course of the summer, our colleagues in data science have been running a prototype project with a number of research library partners and other libraries focusing on linked data and processes of linked data and actually making linked data a production reality at OCLC. We will be having a webinar in a few weeks, kind of a report out on that particular pilot project. But what is coming out of that project is that we realize there is a, a bit of a demand for people to be more in a sandbox environment to explore these technologies and new workflows and how we're looking at data and how it's impacting library operational workflow and how it should be or could be influencing what we're doing across the broader OCLC enterprise. I'll be working with the head of our technical research data science group, Andrew Pace, to be developing more of these um, under the hood experiences for the research library partnership so you can kind of really understand um, the strategic importance of these shifts in the technology, but then also understand how we're incorporate them, how we're removing them from a prototype, and how it's actually influencing production at OCLC. We'll be looking about you know, how people are actually using some of the OCLC APIs and are there some improvements we can make. Um, dig into our work within the IIIF community and how that's showing up in Content DM. So really connecting that broad strategic application and those shifts of open technology or technology communities and then working through that and so you can see the practical application um, throughout the OCLC organization. So I want to say watch this space. There's some really exciting energy that's going to be happening. And um, if you have comments or you want to help us kind of guide us in some of these areas, let us know. The last bit I want to tell you here is a last slide that's really important to us, and it's around our commitment to equity, diversity, and inclusion. Last year, the research division had the great opportunity to have Dieta Jenjian come and talk to us about cultural competencies. And for us as a division, it made us really think about how we apply that equity lens to everything we do. Um, and how we do it, how we offer our programs, how we bring a diversity of voices into our working groups, and how we can um, assess what we deliver so it is readily accessible to a broad audience. So we're working with our colleagues and partners We've to develop an EDI resource page. And this year we're investigating with our communications department, as I said, to investigate the level of accessibility around our reports, our webinars, and our research outputs. And one of the things that I'm really proud about is the our Distinguished Seminar Series, which we've brought speakers into our Dublin office to challenge our staff, and then we share these seminars live and through recorded efforts. You know, the conversations we've had with Kim Christian, with Char Booth, with um, Melissa Levine. So the recordings are there, the transcripts are there, but what I'm really excited about is that we're actually publishing discussion guides along with these seminars. So you in, at your home institution can unpack those concepts that our speakers have talked about and further explore what it means for your work at your institution.
So uh, kind of finishing up where I started, the value of the research library partnership is our network, is you, the people who participate, is our program officers on how they connect us together between our disciplines to expertise within OCLC, and also serve as uh, facilitators, and I wanna say maybe talent brokers within our network to facilitate opportunities for our creative problem solving. Although we spend a majority of our effort offering opportunities in a virtual environment, we do actually show up in person <laughs> in physical spaces. And in this year, we're gonna be hosting some pre-conferences associated with our regional meetings. Um, the first one is going to be a, a pre-conference with our America's Regional Council uh, Conference the OCLC America Regional Conference that's happening in Chicago. It'll be on October 24th. We'll also be offering a bit of a RLP workshop prior to the RLUK meeting in March. And I'm also very excited to say that we're gonna be, again, offering a research library partner meeting, face-to-face -face meeting in Dublin, Ohio, and in April. We'll be sending out more information about logistics about that particular meeting a save the date message, but um, in an effort to make sure that the time that you take to come to Dublin and share with us is leads to productive conversations and is, in, and is a good investment of your time, we'll be taking the next few months to when you participate in our webinars, when you meet us in person, to identify those things that really benefit from having a face-to-face shared understanding in-person conversation. So that agenda will be forming as we come closer to the event, and we really look forward to you participating and coming to Dublin to share with us. So that was a really high level, very fast paced um, spin through the uh, universe of the Research Library Partnership. I am incredibly excited and proud of the program that we have lined up for the next few months. I am excited about how our program officers are reaching uh, across disciplinary boundaries to find those really exciting spaces in between to explore. And I am looking forward to hearing questions from you so we can continue to um, shape and refine what we're